Hi, my name is David with Tennessee Valley Solar and Mr. DIY Solar. I am here with my off-grid solar setup here, and I wanted to walk through how all of this is configured and providing solar power here from my off-grid cabin here in the woods of Tennessee. If you follow through on this, you'll have everything you would need to know to set up a off-grid solar powered house or cabin like what I've got here. On the left I have my 3000 watt grow watt inverter. It is connected to a thousand watts of solar panels outside and it's also connected to a generator that's outside. Next to it, to the right, I have a 40 amp charge controller that's connected to another four panels providing about a thousand watts of power. And uh, they're both connected to the same set of batteries. This charge controller's solar is coming in through this breaker and going up into the solar input on this charge controller here. And the grow watts panels are connected to this breaker comes up through the floor and goes into the grow watt both of them the battery outputs are going down to this bank of four 12 volt batteries i have them in two series so that's a bank of batteries that, that's one 24 volt battery there and that's a second 24 volt battery there and they are paralleled together because of those two heavy wires right there that are connecting together the whole bank for me and turning that into a 24 volt battery that grow watt requires a 24 volt battery and this little charge controller here can work with 12 volt or 24 volt batteries but it provides a thousand watts of solar at 24 volts versus 500 watts of solar at 12 volts so it's better to put it in 24 versus 12. I have connected uh, on the grow watt this is the battery input or the solar input these two black and wet red wires here are the battery and then on the left, the green wire is the input for my generator. And the yellow Romex is the output to my breaker box downstairs. I'm going to show that breaker box here shortly. And go over what's on the other end of that piece of yellow Romex here in a bit but there is a breaker uh, disconnect here on the battery input to that charge uh, this uh, this grow watt inverter Char uh, it's a hybrid inverter so it's got a charge controller and an inverter built into it as well as having an ac input it essentially has a battery charger built in as well coming off of my batteries i have a bunch of DC power equipment here connected and the batteries are coming directly the power is coming directly off the batteries into this breaker and then comes off that breaker this is a low voltage disconnect so if when I'm not here if the batteries run down because of bad weather that low voltage disconnect should kick in and turn off all of the DC powered stuff up here. Since it's coming off the batteries at 24 volts, this is a 24 volt low voltage disconnect and it I have it going through some bus bars here for the 24 volt. Coming off of those bus bars I have a small step down transformer that steps it down to 12 volt and then 
I've got 12 volt bus bars here where my Wi-Fi and my internet connection is here. Also coming off the 12 volt, I have these LED strip lights and some uh, ceiling fans and some other DC powered stuff uh, scattered elsewhere in the cabin. So with this, I'm able to power everything in the cabin with either AC or DC power based on what works best. Coming through DC power means that I don't have to go through the inverter and I can keep the inverter off when I don't need it and some things will continue to be powered because of the DC power. I'm going to go down and take a look at the the breaker box that downstairs that's on the other end of this piece of Romex and I'm going to add that here in a second. And this is the breaker box. So this piece of Romex is the feed that's coming down through the floor from the solar inverter upstairs. It's feeding in uh, to this single pole breaker right here. Got a little 30 amp breaker there. And all of the power for this breaker box is coming through this one breaker right here. Since it's providing just 110, it would only be powering one half of the breaker box, every other breaker. So I've got a, a jumper across right there. And that allows power to move over to the other half of the breaker box. This would not be a safe thing to do if you are connected to grid power or if you ever want to use any single pole breaker or a double pole breaker, sorry. Uh, double pole breakers would require 220. And if you're doing 220, having that jumper across there would not be a good thing. So if you are using an inverter that produces 220, you'd have a double pole breaker down there at the bottom. And that would be powering both sides of the box, which means you wouldn't need that jumper up there. But all of my circuits are coming down through the, through the floor and are connected to various different other single pole breakers here and are going off and powering their respective loads. And I need to put a jumper from this grounding bar over to that grounding bar because that grounding bar isn't connected so all of my circuits are over on this side connected to this bar and that means that these are able to be powered if I plugged them in over there I wouldn't be able to get any power on them so but this is how I have my off-grid cabin setup. So all of the AC power is flowing through this cable and powering into that single pole breaker. And the inverter upstairs is connected to the generator so it's able to decide whether it wants to be providing power off of the generator or if it wants to be providing battery power or if it's providing solar power and it decides which is the right power to send to the output. The output's coming down here and powering this box. And these are my two banks of panels that I have set up. This array is facing due south and This array here is uh, facing where I can get more of the afternoon sun. I've got trees that sort of surround this property. So in the, the morning, these are shaded and these panels get more of the sun in the morning. And then in the afternoon, 
that sun will shift over to these panels and provide some charge into the later evening. These panels are connected to my Grow Watt inverter and these panels are connected to the EP Ever little 40 amp charge controller on the side. And so together when they're running, they're should they're rated for providing 2000 watts of power when they're both fully powered because they're at two different angles though they'll rarely ever be providing their full capacity together at the same time but having them faced in two different directions means I get a lot more power in the later afternoon as the sun is setting so these are the the panels that I have set up feeding up into the inverter and charge controller upstairs. This has been David with Tennessee Valley Solar and Mr. DIY Solar. I hope this has been useful and informative on how to set up your own off-grid solar setup. If this has been useful, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you have any questions about setting up DIY solar. Thanks so much. Bye.